All right, a little football here on this uh, Wednesday afternoon. The always interesting Fran Brown uh, recruiting scene. Which, man, it's not gotten not interesting yet. We're just talking in the chat. Like, we never used to really talk minutiae of recruiting. Like, we always, we'd have Mike McAllister on. He'd, he'd give us a great rundown of it all. He'd have a uh, finger on the pulse of it. But, like, you weren't living minute by minute on football recruits in uh, in April. Like, thinking back. So whatever year that would have been, 2016, I, man, well, whatever year DeVito was getting uh, recruited at this point, like, I remember, like, him verbaling to Syracuse right around now, whatever year that was, like, that was like, wow, look at that, that, that feels huge for Dino and the program and all of that, and then we just, we didn't really have more conversations like that uh, in the ensuing years, because, you know, you know, stars and all that, he was the high water mark of it all, and obviously, you know, as much as uh, the... <laughs> The Tommy DeVito Giants thing was electrically entertaining for a few weeks uh, this year. Tommy never quite worked out this way, and the recruits never quite matched up to those stars or anything like that going forward. But here now we are in football. We're talking about, I forget who we mentioned last week that had a list like that with Syracuse and a bunch of teams. And that's the good thing. We don't have to hang on one guy. Like if Syracuse doesn't get this Jaden Loftus guy, or Jaden Lofton, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's so what, but it kind of is so what. Because the Orange are on lists like that for multiple guys. And you're going to get some of them, and you're not going to get some of them. But if you're on the list like that for good enough guys, that you're on the right list, it's not make or break for getting that one guy. It's not make or break. Now, you want to get as many as you can, and the better ones you can, sure. But it's not make or break. If you're on the list for six or seven guys like this loft, then you get a couple of them. Like, okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we'll keep our eyes on it. But the the developments on this, you know, day in and day out and list season and releases and graphics and every every 17-year-old high school kid now has to have his own uh, recruiting graphic with schools and logos and this is and that. So, man, there is always something. There is always something. So that stuff we'll keep an eye on for the future. We're keeping an eye on the much more immediate future as well, and that's what the team is going to look like uh, next year. And still very intrigued on the extremely recent past of the now last three to four months of uh, the football team, of how things went down, what was it like for guys stayed on the team, how did they decide uh, to stay on the team, what was the process, where are you at now, what's it all like? One of these guys I talked to this week is Dennis Jockes. Had last season cut short. He had just been getting going, making some plays, cut short by injury, missed the last half of the season. He's back now. He's healthy now. He's a Jersey guy. He's playing for a Jersey guy. He's happy about all of it. Here's my conversation uh, from earlier this week with Dennis Jockes. Well, we're talking spring football. Dennis Jacquez is our uh, guest here. And, uh, man, it's got to be mentally rough here the last couple of years for you, just getting it rolling and getting it hurt. H- how did you push through that these last two offseasons? Uh, honestly, just my family and my teammates. You know, they, they brought me along. You know, it was adversity. You know, I believe in the quote, you know, God gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. So having my family to have my back and, you know, tell me to just, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do with my life. So just having them with me, they kept me along, kept me good. Well, uh, you must be battling well because – Fran says he, he doesn't give out these numbers willy-nilly. I, I see you got a nice number 11 on you here. What would you do to, do to earn this one? Man, just dart. Like, that's, that's what Coach always emphasizes is dart, being detailed, you know, stuff like that. So I think I've been doing a good job, you know, living by our identity as a team. So I think that's how I earned my number. All right. I think we got to go back till the end of November, beginning of December with all you guys. What, what was that time like? Coaching change? getting to know the new coach, the new staff. How did you get through all of that? It was really frustrating. You know, we lost a lot of guys, you know, with the portal. You know, some guys just entered the portal right away. So just, you know, having brothers that have been with you for the past year or two years and then they're just gone, it's, it's really hard. You know, and you, that definitely played a role when it came to the bowl game, too, around that time. So it was it was a hard moment for the team. But yeah, I, I think we came through. I think, Dennis, a lot, you know, and not just Syracuse, right? There's a coaching change and just everyone leaves. Mm-hmm. What made you stay? Honestly, my relationship with Coach Fran, you know, being a South Jersey kid and living in Camden for some time growing up, it just like we knew Coach Fran as growing up. I knew I knew Coach Fran or heard of him since I was about eight years old when I started playing football. So knowing that he was coming, I knew that he would have my best interest and that, you know, he would have my back. And as long as I did my part and worked hard, you know, good things will come about. All right, you've said the same exact thing that everyone on Jersey on this team has Fran. said, that, like, somehow you knew Fran when you were six or eight. Fran, uh, Fran. How, do you, how do you all know this guy? What What is he doing to make himself known to you guys? It's just everybody knew Coach Fran. Like, if you just grew up and you played football, you knew who Coach Fran. I don't know how you found out, but you just found out who Coach Fran was. He always, you know, looked out for South Jersey kids. That's something he's always been a part of. It's always he'll continue to do. 
So you just knew about them growing up. How important is that time? Jersey to here, obviously it's a, it's an easy car ride. You know, mm -hmm. you guys are all together. How, what is that bond like right now? It's like, we've been saying like the 856 to the 315. That's like been our thing, you know? So it's like, it's like a pipeline now, low key with Coach Fran. So just being able to play with guys that like, I played against in high school. You know, I played LaQuint my junior and senior high school, and now we were roommates for the past two years. So just that's awesome to see. And then other guys are doing that same with Deuce. I played youth football with Deuce. Didn't play high school together. And now look, we're here sharing the same field, same with Cinco, same with Fidel. No Fidel since eighth grade. Mm. So just, it's kind of dope. You get to play with like your best friends. How much is that, you know, do you think that's going to drive you guys in the field in the fall when, you, yeah. when you're out there like, all right, guys, let, let, let's let them know. It's like, you know how they play. You've been seeing them play for years. Like, so you know what they can give you and what they can't. So when it's big moments, I can look to my left. I can look to my right. I can look behind me. And I know I'm going to, like, those guys are going to depend on me and I can depend on them. All right, uh, your quarterback, Kyle McCord, he's not uh, technically a Jersey guy, right? But it, it feels like he's, he's fitting. He's a Jersey guy. Is he, well, I guess he was hanging out in Philly for high school, but yeah, is he yeah, a Jersey yeah. guy? Jersey you, you, guy. you still claiming him? Yeah, I, I played youth football with Kyle. Okay. Yeah, I've known Kyle since I was uh, in the seventh grade, I think, is when I met Kyle. You know, we uh, I was a center, actually, in youth football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the quarterback, and I was a center, and now I'm, I'm playing defensive end, so it's cool. So, yeah, Kyle's definitely Jersey, Jersey right. for sure. So, well, you don't get to touch him in practice, but you get to try, right? Um, what, what, what's his leadership been like since he popped in? You know, the quarterback is always big in that role on the team. Man, I've never seen somebody just lead by so much example. Like, like to what I was referring to earlier about Dart, that's someone who carries the Dart mentality and the Dart attitude. He does things the way they're supposed to be done. He's the first one in, the, in like, I've seen him come in at 5 a.m. Well, I was sleeping, but he was coming in at 5 a.m., throwing balls with the receivers, getting the guys early in. I'm talking about since January up to, to probably this morning. He's been leading by example. How much confidence does that give you guys going into next year to, to know your quarterback's doing that? Man, that's a leader. Like, everyone wants to be led. So if, you know, you got a quarterback who can lead by example, it's a lot you can do in this league. Dennis Shockes is our guest. I, I want to hit you with a couple of your, your coaches. Another Jersey guy, mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Robinson yep. as the D.C. What, what has he done for you guys? Man, he just brought this mentality that, you know, you got to have it. You know, that's when you line down, when you line up, you got to make the play. It's not, you can't depend on somebody else. He calls this thing called the 111. Mm -hmm. You got to do your job. And if everybody else does their job, how can the offense do anything? You know, that's his mentality. So he's bringing that energy for us, too. And yeah. Uh, your position coach is sitting over there. I don't know if I've ever seen him. Uh, did you know he could sit? Like, I've never yeah, seen right. Nick Williams sit, sit down. That guy's got more energy. I ain't never seen you sit, coach. They say you got that energy. Yeah. <laughs> man, co coach bring that energy. Like, that's somebody, man, I make a play. You know, some guys might be tired, but I'm gonna always look to my left, and I'm going to see Coach Nick lit every time. Man, he's going to bring that energy. <laughs> what does that do for you guys at the, the defensive line position? That pumps you up. You know, like I said, you be tired. But when you got somebody who's coming to celebrate with you, you just get that extra energy, that extra burst, and that carries you through to the rest of the plays. All right, what is the biggest change you have seen in the program since all of this stuff happened? Uh, definitely just accountability. Everyone, you know, doing their part and everyone trying to get better. You know, we got guys staying after practice, doing extra work as long as they can. We weren't seeing that as much. You know, a couple guys were doing it, but now it's most like it's almost everybody's trying to stay after and do some extra work. And then the, the last thing I've been asking guys here recently is, uh, you know, the NCAA video games coming out uh, this summer. Yeah, okay, you, you signed the paper, you in? I already signed the paper. You ain't got to worry about me. And if EA, if you're watching this video, please make me a 99 overall. I deserve it, I think. I deserve it. Watch the tape. Uh, that's a big ask, asking for the number one ranking in the game. But like, okay, when that game comes out this summer, how, how much trash talk is there going to be on the team based on the rankings you guys oh, we, get? We might play every day. We might, you know, as, whenever we got fine, whenever we find time, so as we get done workouts. I'm calling phones. Hey, get on the game. Get on the game. We got to go play. All right. We just talked to your punter, Jack Stonehouse. He, he doesn't think anyone's actually going to use him, yeah, right? Yeah. Because yeah. nobody ever punts in a video game. I'm a, you know what? I'm going to use him. I'm going I'm to get him right. I got my boy. That's my dog. All right. See, there's a good teammate right there. There we'll you go, Jack. Ball, even though most people don't punt the ball, no. but we're going to punt it with Jack. We're uh, going to punt uh, it. Right. Field position game. All right. Yeah, hook him up. All right. <laughs> the last thing here. Um, what do we got? Less than two weeks uh, here in spring ball. What, what do you want to accomplish now till the 20th when the spring game comes up? Just doing my part, like I said earlier, just making sure that when spring ball ends, that we go into summer ball, that we go into fall camp, that my teammates can look at me and say, okay, Dennis knows what he's doing. Dennis can do it. Dennis will do it. That type of mentality, you know, having building trust with my teammates.
There he is, Dennis Jaquez. Visit with him from uh, yesterday after uh, practice. Uh, another Jersey guy. He was already here. I feel like, you know, there's plenty of people on Jersey. You know, Syracuse has tons of people from Jersey every year or for all time. It's right next door. Uh, so it's never been unusual. But now that Fran Brown has made it such an obvious target, it's been like, oh, yeah, you are from Jersey, and so are you and you and this guy and that guy. And you all knew Fran Brown when you were four? How? Why did every... And it always feels, oh yeah, it's just, and it feels like everyone's story was kind of like Dennis's. How, how'd you know? Oh, you know, we just did. He was just that. We, yeah, oh, we all knew Fran. 